Wrist Cutters, A Love Story. Yeesh. A title like that, I'm genuinely surprised I even watched this. But I did. And honestly, it wasn't what I was expecting, but considering it has the title Wrist Cutters, I'm thinking that's probably a good thing. So the plot of the movie is very simple. It follows a couple of random dudes who have committed suicide in their own way, finding themselves in an afterlife that is gray, bleak, abysmal, nobody is happy to be there, there's no stars in the sky, cars can't be fixed by even the most expert of mechanics, it's just completely meh, you know what I mean? It's an interesting take on the afterlife, honestly. It reminds me very much of Dante's Inferno, specifically the very first circle of hell, where you basically live as you do on Earth, but the, the only real difference is there is an absolute guarantee in the first circle of hell that none of your prayers are getting answered, whereas on Earth proper it's kind of a 50-50 sort of situation, I guess. A lot of philosophers apparently found their way into hell. And Dante's Inferno is actually a really good book that I strongly recommend, although I would recommend reading the entire thing, known as the Divine Comedy, because Dante's Inferno is only about a third or maybe half of the original book that describes the afterlife and NERD! <sighs> Fine, whatever. Fucking green guy. I hate that. The movie kind of felt like it was made for TV in a way, because when I'm watching this thing, I notice there's a whole lot of, like, empty black space for like several seconds at a time. Clearly this is where the commercials were supposed to be. Or maybe the director slash writer slash cinematographer couldn't think of a good way to make transitions so they just left it black for several seconds. It's odd, but then again everything about this movie is odd. Everything from the concept it's working with to its weird sort of sense of humor where you it feels like there are jokes here but it's like I don't, they're not funny, but they're not terrible either, you know, it's like, the jokes make sense within the universe, I guess, is the way to put it. I'll admit, it was a bit of a red flag at first when I noticed that the main character was putting a record on a record player in the very first minute of the movie. Go ahead and call me insane if you must, but it is my general experience with movies that if somebody is putting a record on a record player, we are in for some serious, hardcore douchebaggery in terms of THIS IS ART! I'M AN ARTIST! WORSHIP ME! Honestly, it's not even the music. And half the time, the music that the guy is putting on in movies like this actually fits the scene perfectly. But there's just something about a guy putting a record in a record player. He's not putting a CD in a CD player. He's not putting music on his television via Alexa or... You know, he's not listening to an MP3 player or anything like that. It's just something about vinyl just makes me, just makes my brain scream that the writer of this movie is a pretentious douche who thinks he's a lot smarter than he actually is. I could be wrong about that, but at the same time, that's just the general vibe I get. I don't know, I guess I just got burned one too many times by movies that start this way. Looking at you, Moonrise Kingdom. Fortunately, I stuck with this movie, despite that initial red flag, and honestly, I'm genuinely glad that I did, because what I ended up getting was a very interesting movie with a very interesting outlook on the afterlife. Don't let the title discourage you. This movie is actually pretty fascinating, and I strongly recommend it. Overall, I give it three hats out of four. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of It Came From Pluto TV. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and check out some of my other videos for all sorts of Tommy Teal Hat goodness. Until next time. I think I talked way too much about the record player than I did the actual movie.